Hello friends. Though international institutions like World Trade Organization calls for non-discrimination, many countries in fact pursue discriminatory reduction in tariff and other barriers of trade with respect to the member countries and form a larger economic unit. This is the theme of economic integration. In this session, we are going to examine the concept of economic integration, the types of integration, the effects of economic integration as well as four influential integration schemes in the world. Welcome to the video. Economic integration is a group of countries come together to agree and cooperate in international trade by various means. They place differential treatment to their trading partners and they form a larger economic unit with a special relationship between among members within the group. It represents a partial movement towards free trade in the sense that there will be free trade among members of the integrated scheme. Now let us analyze various levels or forms of economic integration. We have at least five forms, the preferential trade area, the free trade area, customs union, common market and economic union. When members of economic union adopts a common currency, economic union can become the monetary union as well. We will begin from the first form which is the preferential trade area where member countries reduce or eliminate tariff barriers on certain selected products imported from the member countries. It's a small step where tariffs are reduced only for certain products. It's a loose form of integration, but the preferential trade area ended with the formulation of the guard rules in the year 1944. The second method or integration scheme is free trade area which is the most common integration scheme in which there will not be any internal tariff. All members eliminate all kind of tariff on all products from the member countries but they do have the independence and freedom to fix tariff with respect to non-member countries. They retain independence in establishing trade policies with respect to the non-member countries. North American Free Trade Agreement NAFTA, the European Free Trade Area EFTA are examples of free trade area. The third level of integration is the customs union in which there will be no internal tariff, common external tariff and group act as one body with the common external commercial policy with respect to the non-member countries. It's a step closer towards integration. The customs union between three countries Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg is an example. France, Monaco agreement, Italy, San Marino agreement are all examples of the customs union. The fourth level of integration is common market in which there will be no internal tariff, common external tariff, group act as one body and notably there is free movement of labor and capital as well. Example is Mercosur, the European community. The last integration scheme is economic union which have all the features of the common market that is no internal tariff, common external tariff, free flow of labor and capital. Most importantly there is integration and coordination of economic policy. There will be harmonization of both monetary as well as fiscal policies. When economic union adopts a common currency economic union become the monetary union happened in the case of European Union when they introduced Euro in the year 1999. Let us once more examine these five levels. The preferential trade area in which the member countries reduce tariff among each other's products. In free trade area, member countries eliminate tariff even though they do have the freedom with respect to the other countries of the members, other countries of the world or non-members. In the case of customs union, there is no internal tariff but common external tariff. In common market, there is no internal tariff, common external tariff as well as free movement of factors of production, labor and capital. And the final integration scheme is economic union where there is no internal tariff, common external tariff, free movement of labor and capital and harmonization of fiscal as well as monetary policy. 
when economic union adopts a common currency we can have a monetary union as well now shifting our focus to the effects of economic integration or theory of customs union the theory of customs union was first developed systematically by jacob weiner in his 1950 work the customs union issue even though economists like j e mead r j lipsy h d johnson have also contributed much in improving upon the theory of customs union the jacob weiner's analysis also called a partial equilibrium analysis and he analyzed the static effects of economic integration in terms of trade creation and trade diversion now we are going to examine the real meaning behind trade creation and diversion starting with the creation trade creation means an economic integration leads to shifts in the products origin from a domestic producer whose cost is higher to a member producer whose resource cost is lower that is there is a movement towards free trade allocation of economic resources it is beneficial it increases welfare in the sense that higher cost domestic production is replaced by low cost import from the partner country since the country is getting cheaper imports there is a gain in consumer surplus and obviously it increases welfare now analyzing trade creation deeply we can at least identify three effects when domestic production of the commodity is either replaced or eliminated by cheap imports it is known as the production effect the increased consumption in the home country when prices of the commodity declines we call it as a consumption effect this production and consumption effect together constitute what is known as the trade creation effect now let us analyze the trade creation using a hypothetical example let us have two countries a home country and a foreign country they are producing a commodity called say commodity x the price of commodity x in country a is rupees 10 the price of commodity x in country b is rupees 8 before forming the customs union there is a tariff of rupees 4 obviously even though the foreign country b do have a comparative advantage they cannot export this commodity to home country and home country has to rely on the high cost domestic production now let us assume that these two countries join in a customs union and tariff will be eliminated and trade creation will take place that is high cost domestic production in home country a is replaced by low cost imports from the foreign country b this is the basic principle of trade creation we can analyze trade creation by using the demand curve as well as supply curve as well in this figure da represent the demand curve of the product of product x and sa represent the supply curve of the home country while the supply curve of the partner country b is shown as a horizontal line pb which is a perfectly elastic curve when tariff the price is dollar 1.50 when they form the economic integration the price falls to dollar 1 with the tariff without tariff the price is dollar 1 and when there is a reduction in price domestic production will decline from 160 to 100 and import increases by 150 units this is the production effect as a result of fall in price there is an increase in the consumption from 200 to 250 this is the consumption effect together this production and consumption effect form the trade creation as far as customs union is concerned now shifting our focus to the trade diversion trade diversion is an economic integration which leads to shifts in the products origin from a non member producer whose cost are lower to a member producer whose resource cost are higher obviously it's a movement away from the free trade allocation of economic resources that is an efficient non member producer is replaced by a less efficient costlier member producer it increases the price of imported good because now imports are much higher the price of imports are much higher it is because it is from a higher cost partner country there is a loss in consumer labor these two together these two effects together constitute the trade diversion effect of the customs union obviously it will reduce the welfare 
analyzing a hypothetical example following our example in the trade creation as well let us assume that we have a home country a and two foreign countries foreign country b and foreign country c where foreign country c is an efficient producer now before forming the customs union both countries are having tariff now let us assume a situation in which home country a forms a customs union with the foreign country b then there will be a trade diversion in the sense that an efficient producer for which is foreign country c where there is a price is the lowest is replaced by a high cost imports from the foreign country b because of formation of customs union and elimination of tariff between country a and country b same analysis can be extended to our demand and supply curve analysis in which we have a situation in which price is increased from dollar 1 which is from the efficient country to 1.20 and there is a reduction in consumer surplus as imports are becoming costlier now because of the formation of customs union with a less efficient country so trade diversion obviously will lead to lead to a reduction in welfare now let us analyze some of the influential some of the other effects of economic integration because it got it reduced as the consumer import prices it increased the competition as well as it lead to the economies of scale that it is also having political factors and power in, in power in the international market now we are shifting our focus to some of the influential economic integration schemes in the world with the european union eu association of south east asian nation asean north american free trade agreement nafta south asian association for regional cooperation sac we will begin from the most comprehensive among them all which is the european union the european community which was founded under the treaty of rome in 1957 with six members later become the european union the european community is basically a culmination of three independent treaties or organization the european steel and coal community the european atomic energy community and european economic community the matri treaty in 1993 renamed the european community to the european union when we analyze the objectives of the european union we can see most of the objectives are very similar to that of the features of the customs union like elimination of custom duties establishment of a common custom tariff abolition of the obstacles of the movement of person services and capital establishment of a common policy with respect to agriculture and transport that is most of the features of economic union customs union all are present in the case of the european union it consists of 27 members as the, with the brexit there is an expulsion of the united kingdom the capital is in brussels which is the capital of the belgium as well euro the official currency of european union was started from January 1 1999 with 19 members or European Monetary Union consist of 19 members or what is known as the eurozone there is also the single european act of 1986 which led to the formulation of a in single internal market for european commission or community european union got a number of institution like european commission council of ministers european parliament and european court of justice now shifting our focus to the asian region we have asean association of south east asian nation which is comprises of one of the fastest growing east asian countries 10 south east asian countries which are intergovernmental regional organization and headquarters is jakarta in indonesia it is a primary multinational group in asia which consists of 10 members indonesia malaysia philippines singapore thailand laos myanmar brunei cambodia and vietnam it is one of the fastest economies in the region and the principal aim is to accelerate economic growth social progress as well as social cultural evolution among member countries protection of regional stability reduction of tariff and ntbs so as members have greater access to each others market 
going to the NAFTA North American Free Trade Agreement which is an extended agreement or extension of US Canada agreement called CUSTA of 1988 the mexico joined in 1991 and nafta commenced its operation from january 1994 objectives are free trade among member countries fair competition facilitation of cross border movement of goods and services increase investment opportunity as well as protection of intellectual property rights it covers trade financial services as well as dispute settlements most of the benefits of your nafta are similar to european union but as far as gdp is concerned nafta is much larger market and one of the largest market and mexico obviously got a different economy with a huge market so basically this nafta is comprised of two highly developed countries namely canada as well as us along with an emerging economy mexico but it got large market shifting our focus to the last regional integration which is sarc south asian association for regional cooperation formed in december 1985 it's a brainchild of ziaul rahman former president of bangladesh the objectives are promotion of economic welfare improve quality of life acceleration of economic growth promotion of collective self reliance as well as to strengthen active collaboration and cooperation among member countries it got eight members Eight to one, Afghanistan was the latest one to join. Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, along with the Afghanistan. The headquarters, or the what is known as the Secretariat of SARC, is Kathmandu in Nepal. And one aspect with respect to SARC, which is that there is an agreement called SAPTA, SARC Preferential Trade Agreement, which was signed in New Delhi in the year 1995. SAPTA is for the promotion of intra-regional trade and economic cooperation among the SARC nation through the extension of tariff and other concession with respect to the trade among member countries. But it should be said that the development with respect to the SARC as far as SAPTA as far as trade liberalization among SARC members was disappointing because of the issues with respect to two leading members of the sarc namely pakistan and india thus we have seen the nature of economic integration and the methods of integration from the preferential trade area to the monetary union though the benefit of economic integration can be substantial for developing countries an effective integration schemes require a proper cooperation as well as coordination most of the time this may lack for developing countries hope that this video is useful to you you can always visit our blog www.skpco.blogspot.in for additional information until next time stay safe happy learning thank you